everyone and welcome to this Edison TV interview. My name is Elliot Burstock and I'm delighted to be joined here by Anthony Darwood, uh, who's Chief Exec of Gresham House. Uh, Tony, thanks very much for joining. Pleasure. Um, I guess before we get stuck into what is a specialist alternative asset manager and, and what an investor might look from an investment in Gresham House, perhaps you could touch on your background and maybe some of the things that you learned that have stood you in good stead at Gresham House. Yeah, of course. Um, very fortunate to be leading Gresham House, having led the management buy-in seven years ago, but I think it's a culmination of many, many years worth of experience that I had, uh, both, uh, both post-university, um, when I was at a business called Phillips and Drew Fund Management, or PDFM, and then over into starting a new business at Schroeder Ventures uh, in London where we set up their public equity platform and eventually they're uh, being involved in running their uh, global private equity business as well. And um, th those experiences led me to recognise the growth in alternatives uh, that was happening across all sorts of investment characteristics and the asset allocation to, to, uh, to, to um, uh, alternatives. Uh, on a personal note, what it's taught me is it's, it's looking at the importance of people, um, uh, looking at the importance of strategy, uh, and also the, the importance of capital and money. The three things need to be combined uh, so that you end up with a proposition that uh, has success written on it, uh, but also is one that can generate shareholder value. That's been something that's fundamental, having been both in private markets, particularly around when I was in SVG and Schroeder Ventures, and then public markets throughout my career over the last 25, six, seven years. It's just critical that one recognises they are different, uh, and actually shareholder value creation can be generated in many different ways, but they're a combination of factors. Uh, and the emphasis in the private markets is often put differently from the emphasis that is put on certain characteristics in the, in the public market. So um, the combination of all of that, putting those three, I'd say, pillars of strategy, people and, and capital uh, together is, is what I've learned. And, um, uh, and I think finally, with those people having a, a team around me, as well as the people within the business, that are capable, uh, have integrity and trustworthy and that you can enjoy coming to work with on a daily basis, absolutely fundamental. And um, without that, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to get up in the morning, whereas now it's, it's really easy to get up in the morning. Yeah, no, definitely good to hear. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but management buy in 2015, um, how's the structure and how's Gresham House changed? Obviously, you've been a long-standing business, but how, how's that changed more recently? And I guess, what, what can investors expect from an investment in, in Gresham House? Yeah, so it was December 2014. We, we okay. bought into the business. Yeah. And um, it's been a, a business been around since 1857. So it was been quoted for around 60 years, but actually incorporated um, as the, the 871st English company incorporated in 1857. So it has history, but it, this management team took the business on when it was effectively a shell company back about seven years ago. And the ambition was to get it regulated, turn it into this specialist asset management that we talked with, we mentioned earlier. Um, uh, and we've developed organically and through acquisition. We now have two divisions uh, and they've grown significantly over the last seven years, both organically and through supp and supplemented by, uh, by, uh, by a few acquisitions. And you know, just last year, 2021, and we grew organically by 50%, but we also uh, enhanced our VCT or private equity VCT offering by acquiring Mobius to go alongside our Baronsmead brand. And um, uh, that, that took us to a total of 65% asset, asset management growth, assets under management growth. And so all in all, I think that really does encapsulate that we are a business that's growing organically. There is more money coming into alternatives, um, but we have a, a playbook, as we call it, of adding value by making acquisitions uh, and enhancing shareholder returns through um, both product development, but also profit enhancement or earning per share in, in, in enhancement. And so I think we, um, we're very proud of what we've done as a team. It's, um, it's been a very stable team and then the senior management particularly. Um, I'm very privileged to work with, with uh, some very capable individuals around there, uh, around the top table. And, um, and I think where there's a lot more to go for, I mean, you can see the, the, the movement of asset allocation from people who, you know, 20 years ago didn't even consider private equity, let alone renewables and forestry and, and uh, infrastructure and housing. I mean, all of those are new asset classes, which over the last 10 years have now become part of people's portfolios. And we provide that. We provide that in um, uh, listed formats. We have some listed investment trusts like Resi PLC, 
um, uh, and, and also Grid, which is, does battery storage. Uh, we also provide that in our specialist public equity area, um, uh, called, uh, a vehicle called Strategic Equity Capital, SEC. But we also have limited partnerships and segregated mandates for family offices and, and, uh, and institutions. And, and those limited partnerships typically are long-term in nature, 10 to 15 years and some even longer. So they're long lock-up money uh, and it's, we have visibility on our revenues uh, going out a long way given that lock-up style money. So um, all in all, it's, it's a business that has, is what would some people in the, in the industry would term quality. I mean, our last year return on capital on our business was 34%. Uh, percent, uh, which is often used as a as a, um, a metric to ju justify ca uh, quality, um, but the growth is important, and and we have it, it, we have product developing uh, new new things for whether it be in private equity, in forestry, and in, 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 in sustainable infrastructure, and indeed in our equity areas as well as private equity areas, and and that allows us to then generate more revenues through more uh, assets under management. Uh, and, and that's the ambition, just to keep growing. But of course, our clients might, will come to us only if we're investment, if our performance in investment is good. And it's good, I'm pleased to say, you know, a significant proportion and uh, a significant majority of our investment products are performing in line, if not exceeding their targets. And so we're now building a brand for a good investment talent, um, good products to suit what people want in their portfolios. Um, and it's really exciting because there's just so much more growth to go. And, and people wanting the areas that we're in, not just the alternatives, but also this uh, sustainability angles and, and that we have within a lot of our product. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's talk a bit more about those sort of growth ambitions. And you mentioned that the performance has, has been very good. Um, will you continue with the strategy of both organic and, and inorganic growth, adding new optionality, new functions onto the asset manager? And then finally, I guess, we're seeing a a big investment trend at the moment in sustainability. Um, you know, how are you positioned relative to others to capture that opportunity? What's your sort of USP mm. um, within Gresham House? We uh, we could be viewed as a play on sustainability because of the nature of our asset classes and our business. I mean, forestry, carbon sequestration, i.e., you know, the reduction of carbon in the atmosphere by planting new trees. We're one of the largest planters in the UK. We're moving overseas in forestry, sustainable infrastructure, the things which, uh, you know, 10 to 20 years ago was never part of anybody's discussion, like with new wind and solar energy and battery storage. Now, there are far more of these asset classes coming online, like vertical farming, energy from waste, environmental banks and biodiversity net gain style uh, investment or natural natural capital. And of course, there's also the residential aspect. So new residential housing is being built, but on a sustainable way compared to history. All of those aspects are things that, that really are core to what we do philosophically. Uh, and importantly, we're developing product to, to satisfy clients who want to exposure to those style of, of sustainability or ESG factors. Of course, our focus is to grow a business organically. Uh, we have a plan to do that, uh, business development of, of new product, but indeed scaling existing product. Um, so that is our core competence and our core focus over the next five years. And indeed, Three years, two years ago, we set, we uh, we launched our five-year plan called GH25, which gave strategic goals as well as financial goals. The financial goals was was to in, in, uh, double shareholder value over, over five years, um, increase return on capital to uh, at that stage fifteen, and we raised that to twenty percent um, to to make sure that our margins, as we scaled and operational gearing kicked in, to rose towards forty percent. Uh, and, th and then we had our strategic goals, investment performance for clients, sustainability aspects, uh, a brand and goodwill generation. So a number of other, other areas. We are ticking those boxes as we go. And in fact, we're ahead of the, our expectations and hence why we've raised our targets in some of our growth areas, particularly like assets under management. So we're, we're in a good place organically. But we also have a playbook of being able to add value through acquisitions. And we've done that. Uh, consistently both uh, how we approach acquisitions is very diligent we have an investment committee um, that also has a, a, an independent person on it um, uh, who's uh, Bruce Carnegie Brown who supports us um, uh, who's chairman of Lloyd's Insurance and and that gives us a, a certain amount of rigor around what we do and it's worked very well when we've acquired Mobius, acquired Baronsby um, and, and acquired uh, renewables businesses like Hazel when we've, we've integrated those businesses 
uh, and it's, it's working well and we've generated shareholder value. So we like to think that there's, there's two parts to our value adds, both organic value add and, and shareholder value creation, but enhanced by the, the, the acquisitions. So going forward, we would expect to keep doing that. Yeah. It is working well, uh, uh, but we will not deviate from, from what we've said to shareholders, which is around our core competencies of organic growth and uh, acquisitions. Perfect. And um, looking at looking at Gresham House, um, PLC, uh, 350 mil market cap, AIM listed, UK. Uh, you know, how, how should investors think about valuing um, the asset management firm? Typically, people will look at um, earnings per share and then the growth alongside it and then put a multiple on that. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have been growing. Last year, we grew 50% uh, our assets under manager organically and our earnings per share has over the last few years grown at, at, at a, a 20 to 30% uh, rate compound. Um, the forecasts, according to the market, are for us to continue to grow about 20% compound over the next two or three years. Um, and we feel good about that. And we think that, you know, if, if the... If everything remains on plan, we should be able to achieve that. Um, uh, and then, of course, enhance that, our dividend that we've raised significantly over the last year as well. So um, we feel very confident that, that the, the opportunity is there and we have the people and products to, to capture that opportunity. So uh, all in all, it's, it's, it's a good place to be. It's exciting, great people to work with. So um, it's now about us executing. Uh, we have done. And I think if, if you value our business on a price earnings ratio, you would look at look at that, but of course there are pre there are transactions in this multi in this marketplace. There are uh, businesses that have been bought that are similar to us. Um, some of those have been bought at, at between typically between sort of fifteen times EBITDA up to thirty times EBITDA. There is evidence, and so you can see numbers of fifteen to thirty uh, on that, um, and, and, and on top of you know the fact that we have a growth uh, business. I would say uh, certainly in the last few years and, and going forward, we expect that. You could put it on a, a, I would say certainly in a, a, a higher than the market price earnings ratio, um, given the growth you would expect from our business compared to what you would expect from the market. So, well, I, I think that, that that that's what I would be doing as far as an investor looking at this. Um, uh, and so I think we we also have a very strong balance sheet. Um, we're we're not geared. We have a net cash on our balance sheet. We typically use that to to accelerate our growth through new products or or. Uh, or indeed um, for, for development activity that then goes into our products. Um, uh, and we also see, as I say, some of our products, so some we do have some assets on our balance sheet that we manage ourselves that are businesses we've seeded previously. So all in all, I think um, we, we, feel, we, we feel that there are a few metrics we can use, um, but price earnings and EBITDA multiples based on either precedent transactions or indeed compared to the growth of the market um, you know what the market's on. I think we, we good should, indication we should be a good, good, good starting point. Yeah, fantastic. It sounds like there's lots of quality growth to come, lots of opportunities. I guess you've touched on many of the points already, but can you maybe summarise um, on, on on the investment case to conclude the interview? There is structural growth in alternative asset management. There's okay. structural growth within that in people's demand for sustainable product sustainability. We play that. We're a play. We're a, a play on that aspect of life and investment. Um, the management team and pl employees within Grisham House own about ten percent of the company. So we we are putting our money where we ma our mouth is. We really believe in the company. We're excited about the growth opportunities therein. Um, so we 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 can see where the growth's coming from. Um, we tend uh, historically to um, uh, deliver on what we forecast. We've grown by 20 to 30% compound over the last few years. And we, we're, we're very positive about being able to do that from this point going forward. Yeah, fantastic. Tony Dalwood, Chief Executive of Gresham House. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.